Welcome back, everyone. My name is Altamar, and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Where we left off last time, we just finished the quest in the Southern Barrens for Canera slash Kalik. Uh, I redid the fight just because I wanted to see what would happen if uh, we didn't summon Canera into the fight. Uh, not a lot changes, honestly, but I think it's supposed to be the better ending. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so we went with the version where we don't summon her into the fight. She still makes an appearance after the fight, and everything plays out exactly the same way, but... I have no idea if we changed anything. We are going to go talk to her now, though. It's our quest, so we should probably go do that. Also, her little band is gone. The sweet teeth? Sweet something? I don't remember exactly what they were called. Let's go talk to them, though. Canera mumbles something with an independent air, then chuckles. Same story, isn't it? But we need to discuss what happened. I'm surprised. Between everything that's been going on in your lands, you find interest in such a trifle as the devil's plots and the family troubles of two lowly tieflings. Did you understand what the forefather was trying to achieve? He explained everything, with his devilish dedication to details. He considers his offspring a valuable investment, and me, well, I'm his property, and my death didn't annul the contract, but I suspect he has another motive. You know, Dima Vegas, like the forefather, lived for one thing, twisting souls of believers in other de deities and bringing them under the reign of Asmodeus. Hell does not forgive mistakes, and the forefather was well regarded there. But his valuable investments slipped his grasps to be rescued by another deity. That must be unbearable for him, and he will do anything it takes to get us back, or me at least. Surprised you and Cleek didn't get into a fight. We can't, thanks to Nethys. It was a wise decision dividing us with a time plane wall, but seriously. The forefather is as devious as they come. He found a way to trick us both, but everything turned out alright in the end, I suppose. What can we do? I'd say we should figure out how to stop the forefather from carrying out his plan. He's stronger than you or I. It's only Nethys' power that keeps him at bay for now. Only someone with a death wish would stand against a deity or his herald. But for now, all we can do is wait. I need to talk to with your sister. Canera sighs, of course, but cheer her up, will you? She must be all worked up, and she's been through so much. After everything that happened in or at the Kamalan's Barrens, Kalik has kept to herself while acting as if nothing happened. This time she greets you with an almost pointed nonchalance. Hello, welcome. How are you? Uh, Cleek gives you a grateful smile, touched with sadness. It's been a difficult time for me. Thank you for asking. Do you understand what the forefather was trying to achieve? Oh yes, he couldn't help but explain everything in detail. The patronage that Nethys gave us weighs heavily on him. But despite all his might, the forefather believes in rules. He imagines that if he forces us to break the deity's conditions, Nethys will turn away from us. Perhaps he's right. But in spite of everything, I'm grateful for the taste of freedom I've received. I've had enough of pretending. I want to bear my true name, and not have to lie about everything all the time. Are you upset that I didn't let you summon Canera and we barely survived, or barely saved the sweet teeth? I understand why you made the decision. It would be unfair to use my sister, or unfair to my sister to use her as bait for the monster. But I can't even think about letting the forefather feed the sweet teeth to that beast. We tried to help everyone without making any sacrifices or putting anyone's life above others. Something in me rises against this decision, but the more I think about it, the more I see the wisdom in it. So what can we do now? I'm afraid all we can do is wait. The devil promised it's not the end, and that he'll make us break Nethys' other condition. I wish I knew how he was going to do that, because it means Kinera and I will meet again. Kalik swings her tail nervously. We'll have to go. So long. I guess that's pretty well it. Mm, that's pretty much all there is. Let's talk to her sister. Would you like to spend some more time together? You do realize sooner or later you and I will just burn this house to the ground in the heat of passion, and then the entire capital. Oh, that was a very quick session. And then we're going to steal her stuff. She also apparently writes poems. There's a poem called Winter. That's a lot of chocolate and stuff. Didn't we already grab all this and sell it? I guess we're going to sell it again. More money for us. Alright, so now where are we off to? I actually don't know where we're going to go. Let's take a look at our quest log. The tournament's not quite up yet. We finished Varnhold. Except for Lost Brother. Oh, he already left. Right. I guess we can't turn that in, can we? I mean, we could try. I doubt he's in the capital anymore. We should have done that before he left. Oh, well. Too late now, I guess. I wonder if we can still go to the tavern. That's the library. 
That's Erlene, not very helpful. Actually, do we have any companion -y quests to do? Or store people to do? Uh, so, oh, right, we have barbarians. That is where we're at. <laughs> I was like, the tournament. We have to go to the tournament someday, but there are barbarians first. That is the thing. That is probably crucial for us to go do. We're going to lose our monk and regain our... Oh, no, we already have our thing. I guess we're keeping our monk. Never mind. Right, Amiri's our other character, and she's busy fighting barbarians, apparently. It's a bit of a journey up there. And I think the best way, and the only way, is through this river. Wait, do we have any other quests to turn in before we fail them from time running out on them? Lost Brother. Just the Warlord stuff, and... Valerie was seen arguing with the storyteller. Oh, right. Okay, never mind. We're not going to leave Tusdale quite yet. We have one more thing to do here. I also built a teleportation room. We should try that out. I wonder if we can just teleport to a town. To be fair, I've never actually used the teleportation circle. I'm not even sure it was in the game fully the last time I played through. Might have been. Let's go talk to Valerie anyways. I wonder if he was yelling at the storyteller. The storyteller just seems like an, an you know, nice young old man. Also, our castle looks so much more castle-y now. We got, like, actual buildings, stone streets. We still have this strange smelting slash blacksmith area back here. All right, Valerie, let's talk. Um, hmm. Are we supposed to talk to the storyteller? I guess we just go talk to the storyteller first, and then we go talk to Valerie. Something's up with Valerie anyways, this is her side quest type thing. She's a little bit or unhappy, she got wounded probably. Also we have like a billion things to give to the storyteller at this point. The captain of the guard told me you had a fight with Valerie. Alas, this is true. Believe me, I didn't want to fight, but my fool curiosity wounded Valerie's pride. I will apologize to her the first chance I get. What was the fight about? I asked Valerie if she still had anything related to the Eternal Rose Order from back when she was a novice. An innocent question, but she took it as impudence or insult. Please don't blame her. I'm to blame for what happened. Do you think she's been acting strange lately? What can I say? We're not that close. She has no interest in the things that matter to me, and I... I prefer the world of ancient heroes and old legends, not the fuss that's all around us here and now. So I don't have an answer to your question. But I know that those who can consider Valerie a close companion might be hurt by her words. Yesterday I talked to Lindsay. And when, she, when I mentioned Valerie, I heard sorrow and tears in her voice. Maybe the tireless chronicler is having a tough time for the very same reason that you honored me with your visit today. That's all I want to know. I brought some shards of an artifact. Do you have anything? No, we don't have the forest knight's bracers yet. We don't have all the shards, I don't think. We don't have the cloak of sold souls. We don't have all the star commander gloves. Oh, no, we do have the cloak of sold souls. I restore the cloak. The storyteller places the scraps of leather covered with unrecognizable inscriptions before him. The story you want to learn is truly terrible. Even more terrible could be the destiny of any person who dares wear this cloak. But as you wish, I will impart a remnant of my gift into this cloak, so it will be able to recount to you the crimes of its creator. Alright, so we did all the ancient scrap of script-covered leather, and now we have a cloak. It is this cloak. We get negative four penalty to constitution score. Adds plus two to the wearer's caster level when they cast necromancy, school, or summoning subtype spells. Uh, grants the ability to cast a vampiric touch three times per day with a caster level equal to the character level. And unequipping this cloak is only possible after casting a remove curse spell on the wearer with a DC 25 check. Bailing this check kills the wearer immediately and summons a hostile Thana demon. If the wearer has reached the 20th level, it summons a hostile Astro demon instead. It's not actually that good of a cloak, to be honest. Sorry about that quick cut. Had to, uh, have a sniffle. Let's see what Lindsay has to say about this whole event going on. Just a moment. I just got something. Lindsay quickly scribbles something in her notebook and then raises her eyes and smiles at you. Hi! Have you noticed anything strange about Valerie lately? Lindsay lingers, then sighs dully. I had a fight with her, a big one. Well, I wanted to talk to her about the best way to describe her hair color in the book, and she... 
Lindsay posts, she said my book is trash and I'd be no better if I busied my time with, ugh, I won't even repeat it. How could she hurt you like that? Yes, I mean, wait, Lindsay licks her lips. I wasn't hurt, it's just, no, it doesn't matter. To be honest, Valerie hasn't been herself lately. She's usually polite, though she can be cold at times. But now it's like she's changed. And it's after, you know, she gathers her strength, after she got that scar. I talked to her before, and she wasn't very nice that time either. She's gotten so spiteful after she got hurt, though she keeps saying she doesn't care. I have to go. Just don't leave without me. Of course, I could just write whatever you tell me, but if I wanted to stay cooped up in a dusty room, I'd still be sleeping through lectures at the academy. Alright, Valerie. Alrighty, let's talk to Valerie. Greetings, Valerie Size. Everything's well, I hope. I'm ready for new orders. Valerie, we need to talk. You've been acting strange lately. If you're going to bring up that scene in the throne room, don't waste your breath. I've to completely deserve that speech. The captain of the guard said you were taking it out on random people. Valerie narrows her eyes. So the captain of the guard thinks I'm incapable of carrying out my duties to you and your subjects? Perhaps he should change his armor for a judge's mantle, if he's so ready to declare such verdicts. I know you had a fight with a storyteller, and you yelled at Lindsay. The storyteller. What business of his if I have anything left from the order? Does he imagine I'm still carrying around Shaylin's radiant face as a souvenir? And as for Lindsay, she knows full well her constant babbling about her book irritates me. Then why did you think that Pasconade next to the tavern entrance was about you? Who else could it have been about? That scribbler used to never leave me alone, dogged my heels, asking questions whenever I appeared on the street, and now... Valerie stops angrily and looks away. Listen to yourself. Why all this bile? I want to help you. Valerie twists her lips and looks away, as if she wants to end the conversation. Valerie? When the girl starts talking again, her voice sounds soft. Please forgive me, Eltamar. I understand your worries. My behavior over the last few weeks has indeed left much to be desired. I don't know why I'm doing these things. Lindsay thinks you're concerned about the scar. So typical of her. A superficial opinion. A superficial conclusion. Valerie sighs. Forgive me. It's difficult to admit I was wrong. And scatterbrained Lindsay is apparently right. The girl hesitates and lifts her hand and touches the scar on her face. Since it appeared, it's like the world around me has changed. Wherever I went before, my admirers, followers, and bards used to follow me around. And now it's like I'm completely invisible. Worse, I see how those I talked to trying hard not to look at the scar. It's like it completely undid me. Valerie stops again, absently running the tips of her fingers over the ugly scar on her face. She finally pulls her hand from her face and looks at you. I've never seriously imagined what would happen if I lost my beauty. I thought my actions would be much louder than my appearance, but now I'm having doubts. In this and in everything else I keep telling myself. You've always said that your beauty wasn't really important, are you changing your views now? Valerie looks at you pensively for a few moments and then shakes her head with determination. No. If I'm to break when something looks at me, or looks at me askance, after everything I've been through, it means I've never actually been worth anything. I may as well have stayed with the Order and lived meekly by Shaylin's orders. Ugh. Valerie straightens her shoulders and looks around with determination. I shouldn't have wasted time on these useless thoughts. I promise that you won't be bothered again by complaints about me, except perhaps from those who truly deserve a harsh response. The girl nods to you. Thank you for this conversation. I knew you would support me. And I did. We got 1,200 experience, which is some experience, I guess. Uh, the storyteller has a story for us, by the way. I just turned in some relics while I was trying to figure something out, but... Uh, Tell me about the fallen soldier. I feel the damp cold of a dungeon. Weapons clinking. I smell blood and soldier's footcloth. There's a dull pain in my muscles and a weariness. An endless weariness on the verge of desperation. I'm a cyclops, a soldier of the 19th unbending legion of the Golgan Empire. We travel the Darklands with the mission of clearing the middle levels of the southwest sector of Serpent Folk. Over the course of the mission, we've lost a third of our contingent. Our rations run low and our morale lower. I've heard several soldiers secretly tell each other they've lost any hope of returning home, but I stand strong. I'll endure whatever I must to return home alive, for the sake of my wife and child. But each new march, each new battle, dims the thought that I'll ever see them again. I pray for the sun's protection and guidance. But can the great luminary even hear me down here? Golgan, I thought the Cyclops Empire was called Coleron. Coleron never heard of it, the story. Teller's face twitches and his normal voice returns. Coleron was founded by Golgan refugees several centuries later. As for why there are refugees at all, well, we'll learn that soon enough. The storyteller's face relaxes again as he returns to the story. 
Our mission continues. We lost half our contingent. But we still have no orders to turn back. The soldiers' desperation is becoming open indignation. If we were outside in this situation, I'm convinced half of the unit would have deserted by now. But here we are, and there's nowhere to run. I listen to the soldiers talking, and I don't like what I hear. This underground hell has changed them. They don't look to the luminaries for help anymore. Rumor has it, some of them have secretly begun praying to the serpent folk's gods. Worse than barbarism, this is pure insanity. But wasn't this mission itself insane in hindsight? Go on. The legion rebelled. An officer caught some of the soldiers offering sacrifice to the serpent folk's gods, and he ordered them arrested and executed. But he had no idea how deep the contingent or contagion had spread. Many soldiers refused to follow his orders. The groups stood facing each other, swords bared. Loyalists against traitors. I should stand by my commanding officer and die beside him, as a loyal soldier of the Empire. But I'm scared. Oh, son, I'm so scared. I don't want to die here underground. I want to see my wife and son again. I couldn't say a single word. I couldn't even move when they butchered our commanding officer and the so and soldiers who remained loyal to him. But that couldn't save me from what happened next. They declared the slain as sacrifices to the serpent's folks' gods, and each of us had to taste the flesh of the sacrificed or share in their fate. Salty blood runs down my lips. I choke down slimy meat and clap my hands to my mouth to keep myself from puking. The sun and the moon can't help us here. And I... I raise my prayers to new gods. My legs won't hold me, so I kneel. And I feel them. I feel they're here with me. They stand around me, their cold palms on my forehead. And my fear subsides. I'll return home. Isn't that what I was praying for? On the upper levels, we rejoined the main force of our army. We reported the cleansing operations as a success. No one doubted our story of the officer's glorious death. Not that I'm surprised. It seems our legion wasn't the only one to accept the protection of the underground gods. Some soldiers even prayed to them openly, and our superiors turned a blind eye to it. Finally, we make it back to the surface. I breathe fresh air and deep, or I breathe fresh air deep into my lungs, like a crimson eye. The huge ball of light glares down on me from the sky. I shut my eye, from no longer used to the sunlight. Tears run down my face. No matter, it's all right. I'll be home soon. I must thank the gods for my safe return. Maybe my son would make a good sacrifice. What happened to Golgan after that? As so often happens, while the Serpent Folk may have lost the war with the Cyclopses, they won victory over their souls. Soon, dark cults spread through the Golgan Empire, replacing the traditional worship of celestial deities. Sacrifice of Cyclopses, public tortures, and ritual cannibalism became commonplace. The Empire began to decay. How was Kalarin founded? Seeing the Empire dying, some Cyclopses fled to what is now known as Iobara. Iobari, yeah, sorry. They hoped to preserve the culture of the old Golgan to build a new country free of the dark cults, but as before, the contagion was already too deep. Kaloran proved to be just a lesser copy of Golgan. And then the Earthfall came. Skies have fallen down, ending Cyclops' civilization along with so many others. Thanks for the story. Alright. Well. We had an epic story. And we're ready to head out. We fixed Valerie's problems. We fixed our whole group's problems, mostly. And, uh, oh. We got a flail of some sort. It is a... Oh, it's very boring. It is a flail plus one. Now we can finally leave. It's finally time to head out into the world at large. Tusdale teleport. Where is Trade Guard? Which one's that? That's Tassel Ford. Trade Guard is not much closer to where we wanted to go. If at all. It might actually be equidistant. I'm not entirely sure. We'll just walk from here. A rest would be welcome. Quick rest here. We should probably put all of our people to work. Uh, what's your thing? She doesn't have one. Alright, well, I'll put you on watch and you can help on watch. There we go. Quick little rest, and we're gonna go fight some barbarians, I guess. We should hit level 13 fighting the barbarians, probably. And then, I think after we hit level 13, we can go take on that cleric with relative ease, the fallen priestess, in the, um, what are they called? Tenebra's Depths, which are just, actually we're walking sort of near them right now. We should put a teleporter in Tasselford so we can teleport out here easier. Ah, a fight. Let's do it. It's a monster fight. Oh god, it's Elder Elementals again. Why are these guys so prevalent? Why are there so many Elder Elementals in this place? 
Um, let's see if we can knock one down. What is the... No, oh, CMD is massively high. There's almost no way we're doing that. This is not going particularly well. That was some excellent, not so excellent attack stuff. Uh, not, not used to lighting enemies well, that was a terrible first. hit. It's five foot step away. Serves you right. And I guess we'll just shoot from here. Maybe we should cast haste. One. Well, she can tank this one and we'll figure out what to do with the other one momentarily. 30 armor class. We need to roll a 10 to hit it. It's spinning like crazy. I see. If we miss. Maybe we should cast haste. Can't hurt, I guess. We do have a lot of them. The bright side, I don't think our monk is going to take very much damage at all from this whirlwind AOE. Unfortunately, her damage is also not particularly great right now. We should use her, maybe her thing next turn. We should probably heal Valerie at least. One's almost dead. Knock knock, can you finish this one off please? Almost. Yay, one dead. One damage, five damage, six damage, one damage, five damage. All right. A little bit of healing to help out. Valerie did a pretty good job. I'm just gonna five foot step in, I think. Decent attack round. Where? Oh, you're feared. Alright, other than Ultimar, we'll just skip everyone's turn. Let's get more healing going. Should be coming back right now. Flames take you. We missed entirely with that attack. We should have five foot stepped in. I didn't realize its hitbox was so huge. I mean, I had a rough idea, but... Oh shit, that was a misclick. Uh, Well, that sucks. Not what I meant to do. I might still be able to kill it before its turn. But not if everyone's missing. Did she actually have to move a tiny bit? Oh, that's annoying. There we go, perfect. Alright, one, two air elementals dead. They're kind of hard to hit, actually. They have a lot of armor. We're at 79 random encounters so far. Alright. What is the country road? Will it take me home? To the place? Where I belong? Uh-huh, this looks perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal to run into, uh, decaying wagons on the side of the road with just tons of rings in them. Uh-huh, perfectly safe. Although, it might actually be perfectly safe because there still doesn't seem to be anybody around.
All right, let's check up on the other side over here. Oh, there's a thing. What is it? A skillfully crafted stone golem. Who gets to go second? And Silene is in the front. Uh, she's actually not the worst tank though. And he missed. I don't suppose you can charge around the uh, thing though. What's its armor class? Thirty-three. Okay. This is going to hurt. We missed. What's its touch armor class? Also 33. Okay. Well, it's good to know they're equally bad. This should do it. Maybe we should cast Bless. Try and get a little bit of extra Let us strike as one. attack bonus out of our people. We did do a pretty decent hit there. That's probably going to hurt. Yay, knock knock, just do your damage. Just keep going. Couple more hits. No? Okay. Well, you tried. Our Smilodon is good at hitting it, but not great at damaging it. Burn. You actually did hit it, though. This is where I step in. It's got a lot of life. A calculated risk. That was pretty solid. So we have a dead person with a helmet and an unsent letter. My darling, I'm writing this while taking a rest stop in the Glenabon Wilderness. Don't be surprised, but I managed to finally get it up to tax. I'll miss the magical potion near her dear Karn various cells, but that's fine. I brought a supply with it with me. It'll come in handy when we celebrate our reunion. As for my homeland, things are getting worse and worse there. Irovedi's appetites grow. The guards are fighting with the Thieves Guild, the old trade houses keep making new schemes, and even the Academy of the Arts has been said to have some new free thinkers appearing from time to time. I'm sure that the pot will boil over sooner or later, and I'd prefer not to be there when it does. I also look forward to seeing you. In the meantime, the letter cuts off here. We got the Marksman's Headset, which is a plus five competence bonus to perception checks. When the wearer is using the deadly aim feat, it provides an additional plus two to attack rolls. Interesting. We should take a look and see if that's useful for anyone. Alright, doesn't look like there's anything else here. Does anyone in my group even have deadly aim? Maybe? Canera? But I don't think so. What's taking so long? Fury's fall, shatter defense is precise shot, accomplish sneak attacker. Nope, nope, nope. No deadly aim. How about you? Do you got deadly aim? You have precise shot, point blank shot, boon companion. Nope, nope. We're gonna rest before we go into the actual barbarian land, obviously, because we're a little bit damaged. Silene isn't the best of tanks. She's just okay at it for now, but I wouldn't put her in like the top ten of anything related to tanking. There's a raspberry kelly though, guys. We can't go to sleep yet. Although we probably should, because we're gonna die if we get in a fight. At least Silene will probably die in a fight. And then we'll go to the Flint Rock Glara or Grassland. Although I think we're almost out of time on this video. We spent a lot of time kind of meandering. But it's important to explore the random things you find, because you find cool events. Hmm. Nothing here yet. I lied. There's a druid here? Just the one druid? Here's the message I've been waiting for you for a long time. Oh, that's unfortunate. There are two quick woods here. That was a solid first hit. Can you finish off this druid? That's a good hit, I guess. Uh, let's just start shooting at that one. That was an unfortunate miss on that last attack, but whatever. I think this Quickwood's about to die. Maybe prior to the first round? Nope. Never mind. Valerie's gonna fight this other quick or Quickwood because I want her to tank it.
It has quite a few attacks. There's another one. It's Valerie's armor class? 39. Okay. So, let's kill the druid. This will hurt. I like how she's just punching a tree. Uh, let's Me see. Me just see. salute there. Let's back up a little. You deserved it. Out of our story. Taste my fury. Is our ability not on? Of course not. Why would it be? I don't remember ever turning it off. I was like, why am I not making attack checks? It was on when we attacked the elementals, wasn't it? In fact, I know for a fact it was. Okay. We badly injured that one. Can she reach it? Yes, but she can't charge it. Technically, she could have charged in, but she couldn't quite reach it in time. Alright, try and go finish this one off. There we go. That actually worked out fairly well. I like how shooting crossbow bolts at a tree is a perfectly viable attack. And that's it. What did we get? As you search, you notice an envelope inside the bush. It's hanging from a branch by a fine chain that runs through the envelope's black wax seal. The seal is in the shape of a skull, and the chain runs through its eye sockets. Detect magic. The ominous seal on the envelope bears traces of magical influence. How does it work? The seal itself is enchanted and will react on any attempt to either dispel the enchantment or break the seal. If the envelope is touched by anyone other than the designated recipient, it will crumble to dust. However, if you remove the seal without touching the envelope, do that. After some time, and with the help of some simple tools at hand, you manage to remove the seal. The envelope darkens and its lower half disintegrates with a low rustle sound, but you manage to preserve three quarters of the letter. I wonder what it says? Does it say something like, Go be an assassin? Because that sounds kind of like what it's going to say. Let's find out though. It's going to say... If I were the thing, where would I be? Maybe that one? You know what? Newest to oldest. Yes, that's what it is. Frondidus. Frondidus? Your craftsmanship is improving and your zeal has not gone unnoticed in Nidal. We're pleased by your success. And this means Zon Kazan is pleased as well. The Emerald Court recognizes a new agent in the Stolen Lands. By Eliander's insistence, the Circle of Druids recommended you be proud, for this is a great honor, but it must yield results. For if you do not glorify the Midnight Lord with your deeds, you will exalt him with your death as you writhe on the rack. You are tasked with observing the barony ruled by Eltamar. Though young the state of his may seem, it is, it, it is significant in that it has survived so long, especially when measured against the countless other kingdoms that sought to rise in the Stolen Lands and now lie, or lie in ruin. This barony's persistence has attracted the attention of many in Avistan, and Nidal cannot afford to lag behind its rivals. The Baron's court is still too small to infiltrate without the risk of exposure. Instead, watch from a distance and pass along any information you can about events within the Barony's borders. Your second objective is the search for an artifact created by Fey Magic in Times Before Memories. The Umbro Court has been searching for it for a very long time and are... Dot, dot, dot. Well, that's unfortunate that it burned up. Sounds like it could have been important. Let's quickly explore the rest of the area, we'll call it a video here, and we'll do another one, because we do want to do the barbarian stuff today. And then we'll try and get a Disco Elysium done tonight before I go out for New Year's, which I'm hoping not to be out too late for, because I'm just kind of getting old, and I don't really want to go <laughs> to a party, to be honest. But I will. Because I said I would, so I will. I am a man of my word, most of the time. But I am, like, just really tired. 
Anyways, we're done with this area, so we're going to call it here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, in the next video, we will be going to the Flint Rock Grassland, beating up some barbarians. That's our goal in life now. Beat up Amiri's people. See you guys next time.